All right, today let's put the spotlight then on Log9 Materials. It's a Bangalore-based deep tech battery technology company and they have launched the first lithium-ion cell manufacturing facility uh, just very recently and uh, they emerged as India's first commercial lithium-ion cell manufacturer. We've got with us Karthik uh, Hajela, who is the co-founder and COO now joining us. Thanks so much for taking time out. So just let's start a little bit by taking the clock back as to how the journey began, because I understand that uh, it's aluminium air batteries, and now majority of the business, of course, as we discuss, is lithium-ion batteries. Uh, how is the company really seen this shift? Uh, so the primary vision about Log9 Materials was to build a Bosch or a Panasonic out of India. We didn't see a lot of hardware startups from uh, the country and that's where the idea was to build a company on fundamental research and science. Uh, energy is one vertical we focus on wherein we continue innovating. Uh, we were so there were two segments we were targeting. One was uh, last mile electrification of vehicles and the other was long haul. In long haul applications, aluminum fuel cell still remains as one of the projects that is under research in Log9. But for last mile, which is a low hanging fruit for um, all of us, we realized that you know we could innovate on lithium ion batteries, make it better, and make it more tropical centric, specifically for India and other countries in this belt, and make it uh, specifically for these commercial applications. And that's where uh, our focus. I'll not say shifted, but all but went a lot towards lithium ion batteries and innovating on two major things or fundamental things on lithium ion cells on currently existing lithium ion cells. One is long uh, cycle life that for, you can get twenty years sort of life on your batteries, and the other is fast charging times. Today, we're the fastest charging two wheeler at scale uh, in the world. So uh, that's what the innovations were, and that's why. Uh, shifting our focus a bit from aluminum fuel cells to last mile applications where the uh, the the fruit was right in front of us uh, and the market was right in front of us to target. Okay, that's interesting. And um, what about supply chain challenges, you know, availability of raw materials, etc. Has that been a hindrance? Have you managed to overcome it? How are things panning out right now versus the initial days? Uh, so, uh, in our whole journey in the last three, three and a half hours of, uh, you know, make, being a battery player in this ecosystem, I think we did feel a hiccup during COVID times, which was primarily, but that was in all sectors. Semiconductors was the worst hit, which was impacting uh, our raw materials at the battery management side, at the electronic side. Uh, now those supply chains are much, much more better. And I think there is lesser impact and the markets have recovered from that. Uh, in terms of material supply chain, uh, there uh, we have been working with almost every other global lithium and uh, active material, electrolyte material supplier. Uh, it's not been a challenge as of yet, but definitely as the industry scales in India, there would be the need for a lot of these material manufacturers to start indigenizing and setting up their plants in India so that we have a better supply chain. Today, uh, there's not even much uh, manufacturing in India of lithium ion cells. And hence, we don't see a lot of challenges there. The moment this goes to gigawatt hour or 10 of gigawatt hour scales, which China is at today and Europe and US are at, uh, we will definitely need a lot of these global players to come to India, set up processing or Indian players, uh, bigger uh, players in the chemical industries to pick these nodes up in either electrolytes, active materials, lithium active materials and all to start setting up those plants in India. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, get us a sense as to, um, you know, what uh, currently, uh, you know, to date, how many, uh, you know, how how many batteries you've commercialized with in uh, leading collaboration with the leading OEMs, which are those OEMs and what are the overall uh, pilot programs that you have uh, undertaken world over? Yeah. So in the last mile sector, we've, uh, we've been pretty strong in the three-wheeler cargo segment uh, where uh, we've put uh, more than now uh, 4,000 batteries on road. Uh, this is three-wheeler electric cargo, which we also foresee as the uh, fastest uh, converting electric market in India, uh, apart from uh, three-wheeler overall. Uh, also, we just started two wheelers four months back, uh, scaling up that market, and we've already been able to put up more than 500 vehicles currently in that segment. We have also entered the four wheeler cargo segment, uh, 
uh, four wheeler commercial electric cargo wherein we first uh, today because there are no major oems in that sector apart from tata we also took the retrofit uh, journey and used retrofit vehicles to put those vehicles on road we've touched a number of 50 in that segment and we're looking at expanding that number as well so we're anywhere around 4000 to 5000 vehicles already on road on our battery packs running in India. And uh, just to tell you, these batteries are very unique. The batteries that we've provided to the market, to our customers are all 20 year life battery packs. Uh, you don't have to worry about life and all in that. Plus these are fast chargeable. So they charge anywhere between 12 minutes to 35 minutes on standard charging infra. You don't even need a proprietary charging infra. You can go to the same charger, which was meant for a Mahindra e Verito uh, or a Tata Tigor EV, the standard charging infras fast chargers and use them to charge your vehicles. It is the first time that anyone in the last mile commercial segment, the two wheeler delivery vehicles or the three wheeler de delivery vehicles or the four wheeler delivery vehicles have been converted into fast charge. So that's the unique proposition altogether to the market. Uh, plus we have started expanding globally. South Africa is one of the markets we're targeting, not from an EV perspective, but from a stationary battery perspective. So there is a lot of demand due to renewables coming up and uh, a shift from lead acid based technologies to lithium ion based technologies in sectors like telecom and all where South Africa is seeing a lot of waves. So we're targeting South Africa. We've also done some small pilots in the EV in through our uh, commercial EV offerings in Indonesia. So that's how we've expanded globally. Uh, some of our major OEMs uh, we work with in this whole journey are quantum energy, uh, Omega C key mobility is one of the biggest and then 3V is there. Uh, then Northway is another we work with for retrofits. In four wheelers, we will still soon be launching uh, a four wheeler in uh, January around, which is uh, with a public company called Jupiter Wagon uh, through their subsidiary called Jupiter Electric Mobility. This four wheeler we will be launching will be uh, a 20 minute chargeable four wheeler, zero to hundred. So it'll be one of the fastest uh, in fact, the fastest four-wheeler truck currently uh, in India and that we're launching in January. Okay, and uh, wanted to understand apart from mobility solutions, you also offer stationary energy storage systems. Uh, tell us how that is performing for you. Sure. So uh, that market is now ripening a bit. It's just maturing a bit. You would have seen that uh, policy that just came out uh, two weeks back, which is on uh, viability gap funding for battery energy storage systems for renewable. So as renewable is increasing, uh, there will be the need to set up battery energy storages to balance the grid because renewable is intermittent. You only get it for a particular time period. This market was already mature in the US and Europe uh, and China. India is just now starting because we have invested a lot in renewable. We need battery systems to balance that out. So there are certain projects we are approaching on that front. Uh, with certain EPC companies, uh, one in Karnataka, which we're looking at, um, a container-based system. We have already deployed a couple of systems for commercial and industrial, uh, which is for power backup. So this is factories in and around Bangalore, wherein we have deployed our systems, both factories and certain off-grid residential houses also, wherein there is no grid and they only rely on solar plus our battery pack to power their house. Uh, but CNI is uh, seeming to get a good uh, pull there, uh, wherein factories, offices, etc., who have sustainability goals are looking at uh, uh, offsetting their diesel genset usage with lithium-ion batteries. So that's a market that we have started targeting. And as I said, South Africa is a prime mar uh, target market for us right now from a global perspective from stationary battery systems. Okay, fair enough. So um, give us a sense as to what your annual revenue run rate is currently at, your financial metrics, are you a bit of break even currently, what's the timeline in place? Uh, so uh, last financial year we did approximately a $10 million top line. Um, Logline was a pre-revenue company till 2000. Uh, 2021 odd. When I say pre-revenue, very small revenues. We were a very research-driven company, and we were. It took us quite some time to innovate on products, which is very natural globally. Uh, but we started innovative. We started uh, doing our revenue from last year. We did a 10 million dollar uh, top line last year, and uh, we ended uh, our year at a uh, at a four million dollar sort of ARR which is now what we're looking at this year as well as a $4 million MRR. Sorry. So this year we're targeting a 40 to $50 million uh, annual revenue, uh, which is primarily again will be from the EV sector. 
um so that's where we are in terms of manufacturing our uh, manufacturing is um, a, a bit uh, positive um uh, and the target is uh, almost that in the next one one and a half years we're looking at the complete company being uh, a bit of break even at least a lot of our expenses in the r and d um, uh, function of ours we are one of the uh, we have num- uh, we have one of the most highest number of people in r and d as a percentage of total company size in india we have close to 120 people as scientists and engineers in the company uh, and hence there's a lot of burn that we have on the r and d side which we feel is a good investment seeing that this market is completely dynamic and needs this investment from a, a long term perspective rather than just manufacturing so currently our manufacturing ebitda positive is something that we've looked at very seriously and is uh, there but the company ebitda level break even would be one one and a half years at least seeing the growth pace that we have which is almost 3 to 4 years every year, for the 3 to 4 times every year and uh, given the fact that it is national engineers day um, what would really be the message uh, to all of the other engineers perhaps those scrambling who maybe have aspirations to start off on their own to build a business what would be your advice i think um, one and that we have followed since college because we were a company which came out from iit rudki uh, when we were in fact uh, studying there uh one would be to follow your passion so a lot of us join engineering colleges with various degrees with various branches but never pursue that passion majorly because we feel there is a demand supply gap in terms of jobs uh people usually switch from their primary uh, bachelors whatever they would have been working on let's suppose mechanical electrical electronics they usually switch to coding or software thinking there are more job opportunities but i feel uh we need more hardware engineers we need more fundamental uh, uh engineers who work on their fundamental domain on their primary domain be it electronics biotech uh because these are the need of the hour i think we are at an uh, we are at a inflection point in terms of where these all these jobs in robotics evs all of these are going to just increase from here uh software is almost at a saturation in terms of uh where we are and it's just a growing but in terms of talent we need a high number of talent in material science uh basically for battery cell manufacturing or battery pack manufacturing electrical engineers robotic engineers aeronautic engineers looking at how electric taxis like uh, are coming in the market we need people who can look at aeronautical very uh, from a very different angle so i think my message would be to pursue whatever you joined your engineering for whatever your passion was and just pursue that good to have you on board thanks so much for joining in thanks a lot thank you